Let's see if our non-invasive capacitive check is kind of accurate. You know how to do that? Check the uh, capacitor? Yeah, without actually pulling it from the circuit. I'm going to do it here with this meter. You can use vir virtually any meter as long as it reads volts and amps. So, well, first what we're going to do, it's multi-layered. So, we're going to, because it's a true power meter, remember we discussed that the other day? We're going to measure our power factor. Our power factor is going to be what, show, what tells us if this capacitor is weak or not, potentially. Based off of a power factor above 0.95, usually the capacitors, you know, within its tolerances, if it's below 0.95, it's, it's a weak capacitor. Usually, it's not always guaranteed. So if we want to start this, what we're going to do, take our probes, put, we're in watts, put one on one side here, all right? One on the other side. All we're doing is grabbing our voltage. Okay, that makes sense. Now, I'm going to take my amp clamp, put it around, the compressor lead. Now look at that. Let me show you something. What are you getting on our power factor? 0.88. So to me, that's not respectable. Let me see if we're. Let me make sure everything's good. That's sorry. That's a that's a condenser fan motor. But either way, that's not good. Let's check our compressor. 0.8. Right. 1700 watts on the compressor. Condenser fan motor is only going to be 225 watts, 0.87. So we're well below 0.95, right? So that right there is an indication to say, hmm, maybe we're a little bit weak. Maybe our capacitor is weak. Yep. And we're just doing it this way so we don't have to take these wires off. Exactly. That's kind of just like a quick non-invasive uh, means of, no, of being able to say, okay, is this capacitor within our tolerances? If it's above 0.95, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be within the tolerance of that 6%, okay? But we wanna measure them in the field, so we wanna be thorough. So what I'm gonna do now to measure, I'm gonna do, put the meter in amps, okay? Then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the amperage of the Hermetic start winding. We've got six amps, right? So we'll take our calculator and we're going to say six, right, times 2652 equals 15,912 divided by our voltage. And now we take, put this in volts. And now we're going to go ahead and go common. On one side, we're gonna measure the voltage between the common of the co co uh, capacitor and the hermetic. And we're grabbing 387 volts. So we're gonna divide that by 387. All right. And that gives us 41. So that's a 41, it's reading 41 microfarads. But guess what? What does that say? 45. You got it. It's supposed to be a 45 microfarads. It's only reading 41 based off of this calculation, which is, I trust it. But we're going to do, the, we're going to test it. So let's write that down. We, well, I'll save it here. Screenshot, blank, 41. Now, we also measured that the condenser fan motor capacitor side was weak, right? Let's verify that, okay? Let's put that sucker in amps, okay? And what are we gonna do? Can you do it just based off watching me or what? We go to common to fan. Well, we're in amps now. We're doing our amps first. I guess I don't know what to do. No worries. So check us out. You were right about the volts, but I'm gonna check my amps first. I'm just gonna grab around that. You see here, this is going to our fan start winding so I'm grabbing that 0 0.51 remember get as far away from that contact as you can it's still good 0.51 because that contactor basically creates a field but it's fine it's not hurting anything so 0 0.51 times so say watch out for it 0 0.51 times 2652 equals 
1352. Now let's grab our voltage. Put the thing in volts. Now what are we doing? Going from the uh, fan. I don't know. No joke? Let's do it. So I'm gonna go common. The fan? Yep. Perfect. So we're gonna divide the number we got multiplying our amps times that uh, constant. We're gonna divide that by 345, 345, boink. What are you looking at? 3.9. 3.9, so what does that mean? That means it's out of tolerance. What is it asking for? Five. You got it. So if I wanted to be in tolerance, I'd have to be five, right? What is it? Minus. 6%, 4.7, I'm out. Now, we already got these things saved in here, so let's, let's verify that, okay? Let's stop playing around with it. Now, what we're gonna do, we're not gonna guess about it. We're gonna go ahead and bust our disconnect. Let me get that out of there. Now let's ask ourselves, is this accurate? Head to capacitance, you know how to do the capacitor? I believe so. Cool, let's do that. Another trick as well. I know this is, if you ever by yourself, take a picture first just because. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No point in trying to memorize this stuff. Aha, let's look. What do we got? 40. Now, what did we measure? About 41. So, it's 40.4. That's accurate. So, that thing is what? Weak. Now, what was able to verify that? We were able to verify it non-evasively simply by using the calculation, but more importantly, by using the power factor method, measuring power factor. All right, it told on it. Now let's do the fan and see if that's, let's see if we hit it twice. Oh, yeah. Boom, look at that. <laughs> Come on, man. See, doesn't this make it more interesting? Yeah, definitely. You know? Let's be done with that. 3.8, so the capacitor shot needs to be replaced. So, if you ever do get into service, that's the meter I recommend because of, once again, you're going to need micro amps, first of all, point blank. And it's a true power meter, which gives you that power factor, gives you the ability to do that non-invasive uh, testing so damn what are all these insects about let's check our volts and amps condenser fan motor you want to write that down one amp compressor you got it compressor what uh compressor 8.5 now let me show you something we already talked about that. You want to pass me that door, please? Compressor 8.5. Oh, no, sorry, the door, my apologies. Oh, there's a drill. Let's see if we can get something off of this. So, let's see. Remember we told you. Can you see the uh, compressor run load RLA? No. It's this here. 17 point. I know it's got a weird angle. Check this out. Little tip. What? Bring that cop to life. Dang. Got it. There we go, right? That's much better. So, now ask us, yep, so 17.9, what should our amp draw be? Okay, if we're showing 17.9, what do you think our compressor amp draw should be if our run load amp is 17.9? Sure. So let's do this. I'm gonna show you something, check this out. Take our calculator, we're gonna pop in, let's just say 18. We're gonna say 18 times 0.6 right 
So this is uh, at 75 degrees. It should be about 10.8 amps at 75 degrees. What's our temp outdoor temperature now? 52. Okay, so watch this. Let's just say 50. So we're 25 degrees below what we should be, right? We're 25 degrees below that 75. Then let's start this over. 18 times 0.6 is 10.8 minus 25%. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's much more like it, right? Now let me show you something. If we were to do um, 25 degrees warmer than 75, right, which would be 100 degrees, you would just add 25% to that. So you would uh, plus, and it would probably be close, probably 13, 14 amps. That makes sense? Perfect, you got it. And another quick uh, test you could do to check the overall health of the capacitor. I'm gonna just quick, quickly grab the one, the run winding and the common winding together in the clamp. So you see you got about 5.6 amps. That should be about the same. That should be about the same um, amp draw is here, this here is start winding at the capacitor. Yep, 5.6. So, yeah, there you go. It's more than one way to skin a cap.